experience some type of disappointment and with extreme anxiety and panic attacks and depression and fear and we know that's not of God because God's word said that God has not given us the spirit of fear but of love power and of a sound mind and by the end of January people were already ready to give up and we're all ready to throw in the towel. And I've seen posts where people have said, thank you, January, for a good year. Mm. We still got 11 months to go, but people are already counting the rest of this year out because of the afflictions that they have already experienced or already have endured. But, and whenever you hear the word but, that negotiates everything previous right. to the but. Right. So if you turn to me or with me in 2 Corinthians 4, 8 through 10, and I found encouragement in this scripture. If you need some time, say give me a little more time. <laughs> 2 Corinthians 4, 8 through 10. It says, we are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed. Always bearing about in the body of the dying of the Lord Jesus. And I want to say Christ, but Jesus that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our body. Yes. So when you look at trouble on every side, <laughs> coming from all directions, all places that you wouldn't even expect them to come from, yes. it's hitting you from the east side, yes. it's hitting you from the west side, yes. the north side and the south side, yes. but yet we are not distressed. And when you think about distress, it's talking about suffering from anxiety or sorrow or pain. Uh -huh. And even though we are experiencing these things, yeah. these things cannot overtake us. Amen. Oh, Amen. Now, when we're talking about being perplexed, we are baffled. Mm -hmm. We are puzzled. Mm -hmm. We are confused about the things that are going on, the things that we may be witnessing because what God has shown us and what we are experiencing now does not match up, right. does not coincide. Oh but yet, mm. even when we are not in despair, uh -huh. so when you look at despair, we are not desperate. That's right. We're not thirsty. That's right. After the wrong things. That's right. We're not hungry That's right. after the wrong things. That's right. That's right. We may be persecuted. Oh my God. That means we've been lied on, uh -huh. talked about, yes. cheated, yes. misused, Amen. missed abuse, uh -huh. but we are not forsaken. That's right. And how are we not forsaken? Because God uh -huh. said he would never leave us right. nor forsake us. So no matter what we're going through, no matter what we're dealing with, uh -huh. God is always there. Yeah. You may can't always feel him. But you should be always able to see him. Yes. Mm -hmm. Amen. And then when you look at cast down, uh -huh. we've been thrown away. Mm -hmm. We've been tossed to and fro. Yes. We've been rejected. Uh -huh. But when I look at rejected, I look at, look at it as God's protection. Because we look at people leaving our lives. Yes. Because there are some times where people are only here for a season. And sometimes if we don't discern what God has put people in our life, we will hold on to them. And then when it's time to let them go, we in the shambles because they were never meant to stay permanent. So we need to realize and understand when people, when God brings people into our life, okay, God, what was this person supposed to be here for? And what are you using them or what am I supposed to impart into their life? Because you can always tell if you're dealing with insecurity, 
because you'll end up in a relationship that wasn't supposed to be yours. All right. mm -hmm. And so we have to check ourselves. Yes. And those things will continue to allow us to check ourselves and be in the place that we should be in. Amen. But yet we are not destroyed. The Bible says that no weapon no way. Formed against you. Amen. Shall prosper. Even yes. though it's forming. That's right. And it's looking like. Mm -hmm. But it ain't. That's right. Hey. And so we have to learn to keep our eyes focused yeah. on Jesus Christ. Amen. What are you focusing on today? Oh my God. Mm. Always bearing about in the body of the dying of the Lord Jesus. Yeah. When Jesus died, when Jesus hung on the Christ's cross and he didn't he at one point was like God why do I have to go through this why do I have to do this just like in life we get weary we get overwhelmed but he said not my will but thou will be done yes. and then he hung his head and it was finished so the same thing in your life it is finished even though it don't look it right now because Jesus Christ died for you and I the work is already finished it's just for us to catch up to the finished work that was done on the cross and regardless of the fact we win Amen. in the end we always win That's right. That's right. and that the life also of Jesus might be manifest in our body meaning that his work will be done within us. Yeah. He that has done uh -huh. a work in you, Definitely. he shall complete it. He shall finish it. Yeah. But we have to be the willing vessels in order for that work to be complete. Can somebody say necessary? necessary. So when we look at the word affliction, now I'm, I'm not one, I don't like to be hurt. And I don't like to go through pain. And I remember one time when I had to go through surgery for a laparoscopy um, when I was back in my 20s because they thought I had endometriosis. And even though the incisions were very small, I had one here, one here, one here, four incisions. But because of the work that they had to do within was very painful. So then after the surgery, I was out for two weeks and the pain I experienced was overwhelming. And I'm like, okay, God. And I believe at the time that I actually had endometriosis. And then when I said yes to God's will, when they went in to do the surgery, they could not find anything. So being able to trust God in spite of what you're enduring and what you're experiencing because you are not looking at what you see right now. But you're trying to look beyond yeah. what you see or what you're experiencing. Yeah. So Hebrews 11 and 1 says, Now faith uh -huh. is the substance of things hoped for uh -huh. and the evidence of things not seen. Yes, yes. Now I'm a type of person who likes to do demonstration. Uh -huh. So Bishop, if I can have you come up and help me since my sister is on the camera. <laughs> if you stand down there, can you come and help me? <laughs> and so if you'll stand in the middle because you tall right here. so stand facing me all right and stand in front of um, Bishop okay so when we think about faith now faith meaning that you are looking at what